want to thank the Lord for this beautiful day that he's made. It's been beautiful all week, it appears. Of course, you get a little rain in the afternoons, but we've got to have that little bit of rain to get things rolling and growing and, and uh, going on. But boy, it's just a wonderful day that uh, God has made. We are here today in our second annual anniversary here at Fresh Start. Amen. Uh, so thankful of what the Lord has done Amen. and uh, the blessing that he's brought upon us. This morning, we'll be bringing our message from Matthew 26. I've titled this message, The Hour of Temptation. The Hour of Temptation. If you turn with me to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 39, where we'll start reading. I'm just going to cover three verses here and take our message from it. While you're turning, we'll ask the Lord for his blessing. Precious Father, we come to you thanking you for another blessed day. We ask, Father, for your blessings upon the reading of thy word. We ask, Lord, that you would use us, Father, how you see fit. Father, all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 26 and verse 39. This is the first prayer that Christ prayed when he had went into the garden. And he said, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he came unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? 41, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We have in our near future an hour of temptation that's coming. Now do not confuse yourself with the hour that's spoken here with an hour on your clock. This hour is in reference to the time that the Antichrist will be on this earth. During that time, it will be very spiritually overwhelming for many. Many people will not understand. Many folks have not heard. Therefore, they will be in the dark, as what we would say, be in the dark concerning this hour of temptation. But this hour of temptation is going to come upon the whole world. In Daniel, the Bible talks about how it would be seven years of tribulation. Three and a half years of tribulation and three and a half of great tribulation. But we find there in Matthew 24... I'm going to start reading about Matthew 24, verse 15. He said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. This abomination of desolation is giving name to the abominator. One who will make this temple where he stands an abomination because he will proclaim to be God. He will proclaim to be the Messiah and he will bring peace into the world and he will bring prosperity into the world. And that's what Christ is talking about when he says, let not, he said the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. We know that things that we see, things that we can touch, are real in our lives. We can, we, can, uh, we can handle it, we can say that we understand it, because we can see it and we can touch it. But let me warn you that when the Antichrist does come, he will come not as a horned animal with a long tail and a pitchfork and breathing fire out of his nostrils and things of that nature. 
He will come and he will be pleasing unto the eye. He will have an easy speech. He will have a chicken in every pot to hand out to every individual that wants to sign their name over into his camp. His desire is in that to gain the whole world, taking it from God through deception, through lies. This is the very reason why it is important for every individual to learn how he comes, to be prepared. Amen. You say, well, Brother Randall, is it written in here? Well, sure it is. Right. But the problem with the majority is, is that the secular church today, don't get me wrong, I'm not putting the church down. I am talking about these that are pastors that are not feeding the flock. <coughs> what happens to your dog if you don't feed it? You got it out there in a pen, you got it on a chain, whatever you've got, that poor animal's going to starve. Eventually, you're going to start seeing the ribs in its back. I'm afraid we see a lot of Christians today in the same spiritual sense. Granted, they're fat as mud, but spiritually, they are starving to death. And the reason is because they do not listen to the true Word of God. Amos 8 and 11, the Bible tells us that there is a famine in the land today. How many of you went hungry today or yesterday? Anybody? Nobody. No, but the Bible says that the famine that's coming in the land that's here today is not of bread and water for nourishment, but of hearing of the Word of God. Amen. God's true Word is not being taught. The warning is not going out. Right. Amen. I've had a desire for many years <laughs> to have a sign uh, uh, that says warning. Do you know when the true Christ comes? God opened the door here at this little church. We have it out there on our sign. And I believe it has intrigued some people. But some are to a point in their life they just don't want to ask. If it were me, I would be inquiring that situation. I'd be asking, what does that mean if I didn't know? Friends, I want to say to you that when the true Christ comes... All of this world will know. Amen. We will all know. For the Bible says that we, as individuals, every human being, will bow their knee unto the Lord Amen. and confess with their mouth that He is King of kings and Lord of lords. That is the very first day of the millennium. Amen. It will happen just like what the Word of God said. He said here in 15, he said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Where is he going to stand? He's going to stand in that moss that's over there in Jerusalem. That's where he's coming. He is going to sit right there in the midst of where God's temple was, where Solomon's temple was. He's going to proclaim that he is God. 16, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain. That is a geographical area to let you know where this is going to take place. Why does he say flee to the mountain? Because, friend, you don't need to be around him. Amen? You don't need to be around that. If you're on a, a trip to the Holy Lands just by chance and uh, you are in that area, friend, I suggest you get back on the airplane and get back to the house. Right. Amen? Amen? Why is that? Is he going to be evil? No, but his spiritual sense and his power that will be given unto him by God will be so strong and the people will be so demanding that they will demand that you give honor unto him, that you bow your knee unto him, and that you listen and follow him. 17, he said, let him which is on my housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Why would you not want to take anything with you? Friends, you're not going to need it where you're going. Amen. Amen. You're not going to need anything. God has prepared a home for you and a place that you will need nothing. 
scriptures. There's no reason for you to go back and concern yourself about the worldly things that you have. Those pieces of gold and silver and armory and whatever else that might be interesting to you. Have no need for that. 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. This is a trying time. This is a time that is going to be very important that people are awake and listening and watching. Christ, when he came and he found the disciples, he did not find them watching. They were asleep. Asleep on the job. Me as an infantryman, I know what it means to hold watch. I know exactly what it means to hold guard for two hours. That was the amount of time that you had set off that you had to watch your post. Your first general order in the army is to guard everything within the limits of your post and leave your post only when properly relieved. As a man of God, that's the same concept that we have, that we are to keep our eyes focused on the world events. Yes, I know we watch our local news and we see the, the turmoil and the things that are coming about. We see how that the world is truly changing. It's changing to the worse. That is the reason for the marching in of the Antichrist. We see so much turmoil and so much violence and so many things in the world. You say, well, Brother Randall, is he going to bring peace? That's what the Bible says. He's going to say, peace, peace. And he's going to demand peace throughout the world. Not only just in nations conflicting one with another, but his spiritual drawing is going to draw people to a point where they're no longer trying to manipulate and take over people. He's going to be powerful. He's going to call himself God. Verse 19, he said, And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. You young mothers, do not be frightened at this. This is not talking about you and your children. This scripture here is talking about those that will partake with the Antichrist. You are supposed to be a chaste virgin, spiritually speaking, waiting upon the true Christ to come. If you are taken by the false Christ and you are taking his doctrine, then you have become his bride. You therefore are impregnated with the thoughts that he has and the ways that he has. And he says here, and to give suck in those days, if you are to feed a child, that is the same concept of taking that doctrine and feeding the people. What he's talking about. So woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days. You can ask the average Christian individual that one scripture right there. And unless they give you the correct answer, friend, they do not know. They do not understand that the Antichrist comes first. He comes at the sixth trump. Class, when does the Lord come? At the seventh, at the furthest trump out, the last one, however you want to put it. So we know we must wait upon the Lord. Twenty, he said, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. But what does that mean, Brother Randall? Well, it's my flight, you do not harvest in the winter. Amen. Satan will come in a time when he is not supposed to be here. It will be out of season for the coming of the Lord. That's why he said, let not your flight be in the winter, nor on the Sabbath. Why the Sabbath? You are not to do anything on the Sabbath. You are not to work. We know that. It's a day of what? Rest. Rest. So therefore, that's why Christ put that in there, to let us know that, hey, friends, don't be taken. Don't allow this. Now, if it was that important to the Lord to write all of Matthew 24 in this Olivet Discord, do you not think it was important, amen, that we learn it and we understand it and that we know that to watch for him 
We're talking about an hour that's coming upon the world. It's not going to be an easy hour. 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. That's a great statement. Christ is stating that it is not going to ever be as strong of a deception as it will be when the Antichrist comes. And you're thinking to yourself, well, okay, as long as I, I know, and as long as, well, let me say it like this. Let me get down to the bare tax of it all. If you utilize his money, if you utilize his banking system, if you utilize his health care system, if you utilize anything that partakes with him, friend, you are part of him. He will rule the whole world. You see, we're right now very close to what we would call that one head being wounded unto death. We're talking about a political system, a one world system that is growing stronger every day. But the Bible tells us that once this has grown, that they're one that will fall out. One nation will fall out and that head will be wounded unto death. Capable of dying, more or less. And that would destroy that one worldism. So, the Antichrist, Satan, when he comes, he will bring all of this back together. And the world will look at him and say, Who can war against him? Well, we know that all of the nations of the world will be all united. No, Iran won't be against us any longer. No, Syria won't be against us any longer. No, China won't have a problem. No, Russia won't have a problem. We won't have any problems anywhere with one another. We all will reunite one with another. I say, well, brother, that don't sound too awful bad. That sounds pretty good. You better be sure you know what's inside that apple before you buy it. It's liable to be just as rotten as all get out on the inside. What the Word teaches. Very much so. 23. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Let me help you just for a minute. Who are the elect of God? I want to say to you this morning that this is the last generation. You are living in the last generation. The Bible teaches us that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So if you are alive and living in this last generation... You were chosen first to live at the last days because of your testimony, because of your will to live for the Lord, because of how you settle your home and how you teach your family. It is important that we realize that God has got us here for a reason, to be a witness unto Him. Not to fall asleep, not to keep our eyes on the things that are not important, but to watch these events and know that Christ <coughs> is coming. Amen. He's coming. I like that old song. He's saying, Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. And he goes on to say that many will meet their doom. And the trumpets will sound. Yes, they'll surely sound. Spiritually, we know that Christ has done all he can to warn us and to help us. Now it's in the fate of the individual. Amen. It's in the fate of every person to know whether or not they have it figured out. It's all in the mind, friends. It's all in the spiritual uh, content of the Word of God. If you know how he comes, you can't be fooled. Right. Amen. Bible tells us that if a man knew that his house was going to be broke in, what would he do, Claude? He'd set up at night, he'd wait for that old rascal. 
you'd keep an eye out for him. That's exactly the way we need to keep our eye out for the coming of the Antichrist. Revelation chapter 3. Verse number 10. Christ is talking to the churches in the last days. These are the churches that are formed around the world here in this last day. And he's talking... To the church of Philadelphia. And he had just told them that they had the key of David. But he says here in 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. What is the word of his patience? That what we just read in Matthew 24. He said, That have kept the words of my patience, I also will keep them from the hour of temptation. That is the reason why we came here this morning. This hour of temptation, he says, which shall come upon how many? How many? All of the world. All of the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That's not what I said. That's what thus saith the word of God. That's what Christ has said. He gave it to the revelator, John, and he pinned it down. For you, friends... For you that will be here when the Antichrist comes. No, I know this ain't very popular. And I know it's not very fun to have to think you're going to have to go through it. But friends, we all will see it. We all will see it. And it's coming really soon. Really soon. You say, now Brother Randall, are you prophesying the time of the coming of the Lord? No man knoweth the day of the hour. Friend, I can tell you the things that will transpire before the coming of the Lord. All of the different things that will come before the coming of the Lord will be a sign for you and I to watch, to be watchmen upon the wall. If a watchman is standing upon the wall and he goes to sleep, what happens to him, Mike? He falls off that wall like old Humpty Dumpty did. Yeah. It's not very good. Very important that we keep our mind focused on the coming of the Lord. This is what your whole life is based upon. This is what all of the hours and the days and the, the time that you have taken out and to put into the Word of God and to come to the house of the Lord to hear the true Word of God. This is what it's all based upon, this hour of temptation. It's all based upon the coming of the Lord. We look over there in Revelations 2 and 10. He said, Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Amen. Christ is not saying that your life is going to be taken. That's not what he's trying to tell you. For we know that the Bible teaches us, those that have the seal of God in their forehead, that not a hair on their head is to be harmed. But we know that Satan is dead. And if you will not resist, and if you will not fight against it, Christ promises you. This is a promise from the Lord. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Amen. A crown of life. Back over in 3 and 11, he says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. It's very important that you do not get deceived, that you do not fall into this situation or the system that he is going to have. Amen. What is exactly going to be his system, Brother Rena? Oh, it's going to be so diverse. It's going to be in everything that you have to deal with. Everything. 
How long do I have to endure this? Glad you asked. Run over there to Revelation chapter 9 and verse number 5. This is confirmation. This is not what I said. This is what the Bible teaches. Verse 5 and chapter 9 of the book of the Revelation. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And the torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. He's talking about these angelic beings that will come when Satan comes. He's talking about the power that they will have and talking about the world, the, the whole world that goes whoring after him. Well, he just told them, he said, don't hurt them. He said, don't kill them and don't harm them in any way, but just torment them. The torment will come in the minds of the people. They will be spiritually tormented. You know how it feels when you have peace in your heart? You know how it feels when you repent before you go to bed and when you wake up it's like a brand new slate? Just the opposite right here. The torment is when God is not around. He's not listening. He is not being a part in your life. And you can find peace nowhere in your life. That's the torment. Mark 13 tells us exactly how these things are going to transpire. But mostly in verse 11, Mark 13, 11, he said, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up. He's talking about those who have a big mouth. <laughs> talking about those who have no desire to follow the Antichrist and don't care who it her lips. He said, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit of God. That is a time of the trying when God will allow His Spirit to speak through His people, the chosen, the elect of God, those that have been faithful to the Lord. Yeah, the whole world will be changed. Have you ever noticed how a small fad will come in and the whole world got to have a bite of it? I believe that those little uh, fidget spinners, they ran from... Singapore all the way to Mexico. The whole world had to have some of that, you see. When the Antichrist comes, it's going to be the talk of the town. Everybody's going to want a bite of it. Why is that? Because he's handing out freely to every individual. We've taken the time to dissect that hour. We're going to back up now in chapter 26 and back up to that verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Now, he's speaking of the death that he's got to take, but also we're going to transfer this into this cup of wrath that is coming upon the people. If you'll turn with me over to Psalm 75. Psalms number 75. We're going to begin reading there at verse 1. He said, Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. He said it twice for emphasis. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. Two, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. We're talking about Christ at this time. This is at the last trump. When Christ comes, what he will do, he will judge uprightly. Those that did not fall during that hour of temptation, you will be given a crown of life to where the second death has no power. Can I get an amen? amen. 
but those that go whoring after the Antichrist. We use that word whoring because we are spiritually as a bride of Christ. One that doesn't wait for the groom. <coughs> Pretty easily understood. Three, the earth and all the inhabitants there are, thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it, Salah. We talked about there last week about these pillars that hold up the world. These are the seasons and the times and all the things. Christ will take all that in and all of it will come to us home. Verse 4, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly, and to the wicked, lift not up thy horn. Talking about these wicked, and the horn is always in representative of power. Don't lift up your power, because when you go to fight, and you're going to be fighting against Christ. Six, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Only from the north, where the Antichrist sits, is where this is going to come. <coughs> Isaiah 14 Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 we're talking about one here that has exalted himself he said how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer the son of morning how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. This is who we're talking about this morning. We're talking about Lucifer. Apollyon. Satan, many names he has. Old Slewfoot, the devil, death himself. Perdition, one that is already sentenced to death, to be done away with. That's why he is scrapping and clawing and fighting to do all that he possibly can in the lives of people today. That's right. Amen. He knows his destiny. That's right. It's already been fulfilled and placed upon him. How about you this morning? Do you know your destiny? Are you preparing your family? Are you getting your little group together and going over these things and preparing your family and your loved ones? It's very important, friends. This is the most important thing that you'll ever go through in your Christian life. Verse 7. <coughs> but God is the judge. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I want you to read it with me out loud. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. He put down the little horn. He's going to put down that little horn. But he's going to exalt his son. Amen. And you will see that. You will see every bit of it. Even if you have a terminal illness at this time, and you go by the way of the grave, you will come back. You will follow Christ. You will come back in your spiritual body with Him. And we all will make the millennial. Eight. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dredges thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. We're talking about the wrath of God. We're talking about the things that will come upon the people that are not prepared. This will have no effect on the elect of God. These powers and these things will have no effect 
whatsoever upon those that understand and are waiting for the true Christ to come. As long as you understand and as long as you keep your flesh under subjection to the Antichrist, you're in good shape. You can withstand. Nine, but I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the Lord God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. He's talking about those who wait upon the Lord. They will renew their strength. They will mount up as eagles with wings. They will fly. They will run. They will walk. Not grow weary. Amen. God's got a way of protection for you and I. Well, how in the world will this work? How in the world will it be that somebody sitting beside me will go through all the turmoil and I won't? In the same spirit that he used for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they went through the fiery furnace with Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible says that the strong men that he sought out to throw them in there, they got so close to that fire that it killed them. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego never were they harmed. Not one hair on their head was singed, and their clothing didn't even smell like smoke. Amen. I'm talking about a God of protection. Amen. One that will protect you if you follow his direction. Amen. John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and verse number 18. Christ has plainly said here at this time, he said, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. That's right. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Amen. This commandment I have received of my Father. Yes. Do not confuse this time that he was in the garden with the agony of going to the cross. Right. For this reason is why he came. Many scholars that I have read have proclaimed that he's Walled and cried because of the cup he was going to have to drink. Schofield says it. Thompson Chain says it. Matthew Henry says it. Many say it. But I declare unto you that Christ was concerned about you in this last generation. That this cup of wrath, when it falls, it's not going to be pretty, folks. It's not going to be pretty. Isaiah 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Verse 17. Awake, awake. Stand up, O Jerusalem, which hath drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dredges of the cup of trembling, and wrung them out. 18. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword, by whom shall comfort thee? 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. What are they drunken with? 
They are drunken with the religious, call it what it is, the harlot. Oh, Babylon. That's what they're drunken with. This doctrine that the Antichrist will come. What's going to be so wrong with his doctrine? Well, it's going to be a giant goulash hodgepodge of everything. It's going to have a little bit of Hinduism. It's going to have some Muslim in it. It's going to have Christianity. It's going to have every sort that you can ever imagine. And everybody's going to be pleased. It's not going to favor to anyone. It's going to be his doctrine. 22. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God, that pleadeth the case of his people. Did you get that? Have you ever thought that God would plead with you? God is pleading with you this morning. He's pleading that we get this. Hammer this in your minds. Staple this down and know that this is a fact. And this is how it will happen. Behold, I have taken out of thy hand the cup of trembling. Even the dredges of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. But I will put it in the hand of them that afflict thee which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. And that's exactly how the Antichrist and his followers will be. They will have control over everything and everybody. And they'll just trample right over top of you, if you allow. It. God has better plans for you. Amen. He has better plans for you and your family. All we have to do is keep a watch for five months, 150 days. That's all it takes. First Thessalonians 5, coming to a close. First Thessalonians 5. In verse number 9. I'll tell you what, I'm going to read a little bit more than that. Let's read verse 1. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. How is it that Christ comes as a thief in the night? Because the world won't be looking for him. They're going to assume he's already here. You get it? Three. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. This young lady over here just had a child. You know what travail means. You know how that pain came. It came slow. And eventually them pains got faster. It's exactly how the prophecy will be fulfilled. It's exactly how these things will transpire. They'll slowly start coming, which I believe they're already coming. And then eventually they will take off. I'm talking about these prophecies that God is fulfilling. Or, but ye, brethren, are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief Lines right up, does it not? Amen. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Amen. You are not have no part to do with him. Six, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Amen. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. They're drunken from the stupor. Read about it over in Romans 11. The spirit of slumber that they have. They cannot comprehend what we're talking about because they have a spirit of slumber. This spirit is brought upon them by God. Because, it's a protection actually, because they would never stand... And do God's will. If 
They were needed to take and be delivered up to the Antichrist and to speak for God. They would refuse. And you and I know that blaspheming the Holy Spirit is the unpardonable sin. So God has put a spirit of slumber on those for protection. You don't have the spirit of slumber. You understand. The Bible says where much is given, much is required. It's required. Okay? That we stay on tune. Seven, excuse me, eight. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. As you Ephesians chapter 6, the whole armor of God that we always talk about. Verse number 9, while we came. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This wrath will not come upon you and I. It will not be a part of our life, although we will see it all around us. We will see exactly what God is doing to those. And if we'll turn right back over here to Matthew chapter 24. I'll read to you exactly what will happen. Verse 23 in chapter 24, he said, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or over there, believe it not. Don't believe them that the Christ is here yet. Let me tell you a little secret that will help you. You will never see Jesus Christ while you are in the flesh. Amen. Never. That's right. How is that? How do you know? How are you so sure? The great Apostle Paul told us over in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52 that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we will all be changed. All flesh will be changed. That's the true Christ. Only Christ can do that. Only Christ can draw those spirits unto him. Satan, he has to beg. He has to plead and has to buy his way. World is his. He has the contents and all the wealth of it. And he has it all at his fingertips. If it's the things of the world that entertains your life, you might be wanting to pay attention to what's going on. For therefore there shall also rise false Christ and false prophets and shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deliver the very elect. You see how strong his power is going to be? Behold, I for behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. What is it, Debbie? Go not there. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That quick. For whosoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the sun in heaven, the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. I could go on and on and on with Scripture today that help you. But as he said here in verse 38, For as in the days of Noah were, before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until that day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
What is this flood that's coming? It's not of water. It's all lies. It's a flood of lies that will be upon the people. People will fall for it. They'll fall for it. The world will, what the Bible says. Then two shall be in the field, one shall be taken and the other left. That sounds like my rapture theory, Brother Randall. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken and the other left. Let me warn you, the first that are taken are taken out of season. You do not want to be the one taken. Although the most of your Christian friends and family will tell you, I want to be that first one gone. Friend, if you do, you are taken out of season. Because he's talking about when the Antichrist comes. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord do come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh, this hour of temptation. Oh, it's going to be so wonderful. We're going to have it so great, the world's going to be raking in everything. Everybody's going to have everything that they want. They'll not be waiting for the true Christ to come. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? When his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season, blessed is that servant who his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler of all his goods. But and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, delay of his coming, and shall bring to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and to drink of the drunken, the Lord of the servants shall come in that day, when he looked not for him, and in the hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's not appointed unto you. That's not appointed unto you at all. That's appointed unto the world that has no desire to wait for the true Christ. Amen. Yeah, we hit on a lot of topics this morning. Very deep subject. Very important. Here at our anniversary, this is what we have been teaching for two years past. Many have come to know the truth and prepare themselves. I believe that many today are settled in their minds what they believe and they can care less about what the Bible says. Many have been going to church 30, 40, 50, 60 years, but never heard none of this. I didn't add this in here. I didn't make none of it up. I just put it together. God wants you to know how these things are going to transpire. Should we be afraid? No. Never be afraid. No reason to be worried. No reason to be scared. For if God be for us, who can be against us? God's for you if you know the truth. Having your mind sealed with the truth is the important part. Amen. Good to be here this morning. Appreciate that opportunity to stand this hour of temptation.